Hey, good morning, everyone. So welcome to your first official day of summer. I hope you guys are having a fun time thinking about some things that you're gonna be able to do, getting outside and enjoying the nice weather, um, but also thinking about what are some ways this summer that we can continue the work that we've been doing around fairness, equity. And one of those ways is I promised you that I was gonna be reading every single week a book to help you think about it and have some conversations about it. And as we come up with what we're gonna to continue to do as we move into the new school year, I wanted to take a moment to share another book. It's one of my favorite books as well. And I thought it was a perfect book for today because as it is your first official day of summer as students, um, this book is called Freedom Summer. And it's written by Deborah Wiles illustrated by Jerome Lagarigue. And I'll read the little blurb on the back to you. Joe and John Henry are a lot alike. They both like shooting marbles and they both wanna be firemen and they both love to swim. But there's one important way they're different. Joe is white and John Henry is black. And in the South in 1964, that means John Henry isn't allowed to do everything his best friend is. Then a law is passed that forbids segregation or separation and opens the town pool to everyone. Joe and John Henry are so excited that they race each other there only to discover that it takes more than a new law to change people's hearts. And I know there's been a lot going on right now that you guys have been seeing as well in the news, hearing from people and experiencing. And so I want us to look at this book and think about ways that these characters help deal with that. Because this is 1964 and the same struggles that John Henry faces here, people of color are still facing. And it's our job to help figure out how to fix that. Let's see what we learn from here. Freedom Summer. John Henry Waddle is my best friend. His mama works for my mama. Her name is Annie May. Every morning at eight o'clock, Annie May steps off the county bus and walks up the long hill to my house. If it's summer, John Henry is step, step, stepping it right beside her. We like to help Annie May. We shell butter beans. We sweep the front porch. We let the cats in, then chase the cats out of the house until Annie Mae says, shoo, enough of you two, go play. We shoot marbles in the dirt until we're too hot to be alive. Then we yell, last one in is a rotten egg and run straight for Fiddler's Creek. John Henry swims better than anybody I know. He crawls like a catfish, blows bubbles like a swamp monster, but he doesn't swim in the town pool with me. He's not allowed. So we dam the creek with rocks and sticks to make a swimming spot, then holler and jump in wearing only our skin. John Henry's skin is the color of browned butter. He smells like pine needles after a good rain. My skin is the color of the pale moths that dance around the porch light at night. John Henry says I smell like a just washed sock. This means war, I shout. We churn that water into a white hurricane and laugh until our sides hurt. Then we float on our backs and spout like whales. I'm gonna be a fireman when I grow up, I say. Me too, said John Henry. I have two nickels for ice pops, so we put on our clothes and walk to town. John Henry doesn't come with me through the front door of Mr. Mason's general store. He's not allowed. How you doing, young Joe? Asks Mr. Mason. He winks and says, you gonna eat all those by yourself? My heart does a quick beat. Mm, I got one for a friend, I say, and I scoot out the door. Yes, sir, it's mighty hot out there, Mr. Mason calls after me. I love ice pops, says John Henry. Me too, 
I say? How do you think John Henry feels not being allowed to do the same things that Joe gets to do? Annie Mae makes dinner for my family every night. She creams the corn and rolls the biscuits. Daddy stirs his iced tea and says, the town pool opens tomorrow to everybody under the sun, no matter what color. That's the new law, Mama tells me. She helps my plate with peas and says, it's the way it's going to be now, everybody together. Lunch counters, restrooms, drinking fountains too. I wiggle in my chair like a doodle bug. I gotta be excused, I shout, and I run into the kitchen to tell John Henry. I'm gonna swim in the town pool, he hollers. Is it deep? Real deep, I tell him, and the water's so clear you can jump to the bottom and open your eyes and still see. Let's be the first ones there, says John Henry. I'll bring my good luck nickel and we can die for it. Look at how excited they are. Next morning, as soon as the sun peeks into the sky, here comes my best friend, John Henry Waddle, run, run, running to meet me. Let's go, he yells, I got my nickel. And I run right with him all the way to the town swimming pool. We race each other over the last hill and we stop. County dump trucks are there. They grind and back up to the empty pool. Workers rake steaming asphalt into the hole where sparkling clean water used to be. One of them is John Henry's big brother, Will Rogers. We start to call to him, what happened? But he sees us first and points back down on the road. It means get on home. But our feet feel stuck. We can't budge. So we hunker in the tall weeds and watch all morning until the pool is filled with hot, spongy tar. S smoky steam rises in the air. Workers tie planks to their shoes and stomp on the blacktop to make it smooth. Will Rogers heaves his shovel into the back of an empty truck and climbs up with the other workers. His face is like a storm cloud. And I know this job has made him angry. Let's go, a boss man shouts, and the trucks rumble slam down the road. Why do you think Will Rogers is angry. It's so quiet now, we can hear the breeze whisper through the grass. We sit on the diving board and stare at the tops of the silver ladders sticking up from the tar. My heart beats hard in my chest. John Henry's voice shakes. White folks don't want colored folks in their pool. You're wrong, John Henry, I say, but I know he's right. Let's go back to Fiddler's Creek, I say. I didn't want to swim in this old pool anyway. What are your thoughts so far? How do you think both of them feel? Was it fair? what the white people did in the town. John Henry's eyes fill up with angry tears. I did, he says, I wanted to swim in this pool. I wanna do everything you can do. I don't know what to say, but as we walk back to town, my head starts to pop with new ideas. I want to go to the dairy dip with John Henry, sit down and share root beer floats. I want us to go to the picture show, buy popcorn and watch the movie together. I want to see this town 
with John Henry's eyes. I think that's such an important statement that he makes here. We talked a lot this year about empathy and being able to see things through other people's eyes. And Joe really wants to see his town and what's happening through John Henry's eyes. What do you think John Henry is feeling? We stop in front of Mr. Mason's store. I jam my hands into my pockets while my mind searches for words to put with my new ideas. My fingers close around two nickels. Want to get an ice pop? John Henry wipes his eyes and takes a breath. I want to pick it out myself. I swallow hard and my heart says yes. Let's do that, I say. I give John Henry one of my nickels. He shakes his head. I got my own. We look at each other. Has John Henry been able to pick out his own ice pop? He has not been able to because he was not allowed in the stores. And Joe had to go in by himself to do it and could not tell Mr. Mason that he was buying it for his friend who was black. But they decide to take a stand and they decide that they're gonna go in together to buy those ice pops. Then we walk through the front door together. And Panther, sometimes that's, that is the first step. That's what we need to do when we know what's right in our heart. We have to take that first step and stand up for what's right. And things that you're seeing going on around our world today, that's what people are doing. And it's so important, even at your age, to be able to understand and empathize, look through things with other people's eyes, see what's fair and not fair, and take a stand. So though this book is not, it's, it's fiction, so we know that the author wrote it, but it's based on real events. These things really did happen, and these things are still happening today. And so what are we going to do together as a community to help make change? So I hope that this story has helped spark some new ideas for you as well and some conversations and thinking because that's how we make change. We have to think and reflect. And so I want you guys to be doing that work as well. We've added some new things to our social justice playlist on our YouTube channel for our school. So be sure to check that out with your families and we'll be adding things each week. So every single week, Mrs. Gregory is going to do a story for you like this so that we can continue having this dialogue through the summer and then into the next school year. So I miss you all so much already. I know I got to see so many of you yesterday, but I already am missing you. And for those I didn't get to see yesterday, know that I am thinking about you and that I am here. So anything that you guys need, reach out, okay? I want you to enjoy your first day of summer and I will see you soon. Bye guys.